Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Justin Vaughn and in today's video, I am going to be playing a recording of a sales call that I helped close last week. So the way that I have it set up here at our agency is myself and other leaders who have shown that they have considerable sales skill. When we bring on new agents, we actually jump on the back end of their calls and help them close their sales because we found that building a team in telesales is a lot harder than actually building a team face to face. When you're on the phone, you don't really have much forgiveness. The clients aren't as forgiving. It's a lot harder to keep someone on hold and wait and reach out to an upline for help than it is face to face when you can just give your upline a call and say, hey, I got this person here, I got a question. People don't have that patience over the phone. So what we do is we actually jump in on our agent's calls on the back end of the line and we help them close their sales and I am playing a recording right here where I actually helped a woman named Tiffany who works with us. She's a great agent. I helped her close a sale. So we're going to start this right here. As always, subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications if you find value in this video. Check out the link in the description of the video as well if you need things like leads or to learn how to set up your own final expense Facebook ads. I don't sell leads or anything like that, but I did find some sources out there for you guys that you can utilize if you need leads. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, this is Tiffany. How are you doing today? All right. Wonderful. I'm with Senior Life Services. And the reason for my call the other day, spoke with one of our company representatives about our state approved final expense burial program. And you mentioned your wife would be your beneficiary and your favorite food was beef. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yes. I told him oh. he caught me on the tractor. You said what? I told him he caught me on the tractor. Okay, so this was a telephone lead. I'm a telemarketing lead. So it's a T lead. We run telemarketing leads. We run Facebook leads, TikTok, all types of different leads that we run here. But this was a telemarketing lead. And if you notice her tone, it's, it's energetic. It's excited. It's happy to talk to him. It's pleasant. It's welcoming. And I found that something to say in the greeting is instead of asking someone if they remember or if they recall doing something, we say, does that ring a bell? Oh, okay. Well, good. I'm glad I got you. These are final expense plans, and they go through small, affordable, permanent whole life insurance policies regulated by the state of Kentucky. And they are designed for folks who live on a limited fixed income each month, like Social Security, disability, even disabled vets. And these are not your real big expensive type plans. These are just small yet affordable plans that are permanent and will never change on you. Now, you mentioned your wife. She would be the one paying the bills, closing out the accounts, and taking care of your final arrangements if you're to pass away. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Wonderful. How long have you guys been married? Keep in mind, also, most of the time when you call leads, people are going to give you resistance in the greeting. You have to learn how to overcome those uh, objections that they give you. I don't even look at them really as objections. Um, and, and you want you can handle them a little differently based on if it's a brand new lead versus an, an older lead. OK, um, if you ch I, I have a whole video on it, I'll put the video in the description of how to master your greeting and final expense telesales. What I found works really, really well for me. People have different methods and ideas for how they handle the greeting. I, what I put in there in my video that you're going to see in the description really, really helps me. Oh, Lord, since 98. Oh my goodness, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, we made it when we were 17. Oh, wow. 18. So she was your high school sweetheart or after, did you guys meet out of school? Yeah, no, we, she went to Hardin County and I was in Bullock County. Wow, okay, well good for you. What's her first name? So, all right, perfect. All right, well I strongly definitely believe getting life insurance is a tangible act of love towards someone else. It's always one thing. Also, if you want the script uh, that she's using, my, our sales script, you can just email me at jve at thejve.com. That's jve at thejve.com. My email will also be in the description of the video. To definitely tell our spouses that we love them and another to actually do something that shows it. Now, does Ms. Joel know that you're doing this for her? Uh, no. I, no. I even forgot. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a, there's a lot going on right now. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I know I, I, I have a busy schedule and, you know, from time I get up, you know, my day stays pretty busy myself. You know, we all, we all tend to kind of put things on the back burner sometimes and procrastinate. I'm guilty of that. Um, but 
Uh, now, is this a decision you'd be able to make on your own, or does she need to be part of the decision making? No, no, I, I, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay, all right. So she definitely trusts your your decisions, then, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys have been married so long. <laughs> Yeah, so right. long. I think it's been like 80 years now. Yeah. I, you know, it goes by so fast. You never know. Um, yeah. Now, would this program be the first money that Miss Rachel would see when you pass, or do you have something else in place like life insurance or prepaid burial plan? Uh, no, that would be it. I have nothing right now. Okay. Well, I'm definitely glad that we're talking today because, you know, having nothing in place you know, can definitely put a, a financial burden on, on Miss Rachel, you know, when that time happens. Um, I actually lost my brother last August. He was murdered, believe it or not. Okay, so this is something that we can improve on here and that our agents can improve on and uh, that I, I have to do a better job with teaching agents to do it, but it's almost reflex for most people to sell this way. So if you hear what she was saying just right there, where... Oh. Um, mm. Now, would this program be the first money Here, that we'll see. Ms. You'll Rachel see. would see when She's you pass? She's going to tell him. Something else in place? Notice how she tells him it would be hard for his wife. Watch. Like life insurance or prepaid burial plan. Uh, no, that would be it. I have nothing right now. Okay. Well, I'm definitely glad that we're talking today because, you know, having nothing in place, you know, can definitely put a, a financial burden on. Okay. So that's the thing. When you say having nothing in place can put a financial burden on whatever. You don't know that person's situation. So you don't know, like, he could be rich. He could be a multimillionaire. And he's like, I don't need a $20,000 life insurance policy. So what you have to do here is you really have to dive deeper and analyze and find their problem and why it's a problem for them. Like what the emotion is behind it that's causing it to be a problem. So in this case, if you could go back and go through this again, a better way to have handled this, maybe not the perfect way, but I think a better way to have handled that and she didn't do anything wrong at all, but there's a way you could handle it better. So you could say, if he's like, I don't have anything in place, you'd say, oh, are you okay with that? Well, no. Well, why not? And you want to ask him why he's not okay with that. And he's going to say, well, because it's going to be tough. You know, my family's going to need money and stuff when I die. You'd say, okay, so you not having anything to do to take care of that right now, how, how does that make you feel? And you're going to have, he's going to tell you how he feels about it, Okay. And then you're gonna just keep leading. You're gonna keep leading him on, but you you get it. You get it leading him through the script. But you got to really dig into these places. So it's important that when you're reading a script, you think outside the box too, because it's hard to have a script that it's not that's not 40 pages long. Um, that's not that's very easily that you can navigate through. So you got to be able to think on your feet and f try to find the problem. Bottom line is try to find this the problem. You need to get them to tell you that they need insurance and why it's important to them on Miss Rachel, you know, when that time happens. Um, I actually lost my brother last August. He was murdered, believe it or not. No. And, he had no, and he had no life insurance, and he was only 29 years old. So um, it cost us $12,500 for funeral costs. I because speeded they're it up not there stupid real quick. Anymore. They've up. gone up. The cost of inflation and, and final expenses have tremendously went up, just like everything else in this world. Um, so when I hear someone... And by the way, these... Dulce de Leche Cinnamon Toast Crunch are ridiculously good. I can't stop eating it. I usually eat pretty healthy, but I had to sacrifice here. I said that they don't have life insurance in place. I always tell them, you know, it's, we're not promised tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen. And at least staying protected, it's easier to pay a monthly payment than it is to try to come out of pocket with over $10,000 to cover funeral costs. Um, but are you still working, retired, social security? Disability. Disability, okay, perfect. Even better. We have plans definitely um, for social security disability. And um, you guys have children, grandkids, anything like that? Yes, we have kids. Okay, so children. Now, they're over the age of 18? One is. Okay, and you have one under 18? Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you guys have a mortgage or are you renting? Yeah, it's a mortgage. Okay. All right. So those are typically things that, you know, most people usually look into and being able to protect. Because um, God forbid, you know, one of you guys pass away, then you're losing the source of income, um, you know, to help maybe pay off the mortgage and 
things to that nature along with the funeral costs. Are you leaning towards the traditional or cremation? Traditional. Traditional, okay. So once again, you don't want to tell people what their problems are, okay? You, you got you to gotta have them tell you because it, it's hard to have a convincing – people only buy insurance if it solves a problem. So when we put the problem in their mouth, right, when we create that they, – the bottom line, they gotta, you got to figure out why it's their problem. So instead of saying that, hey, do you have a mortgage? You're going to hear me ask these questions further on, but it's like, hey, do you have a mortgage? You got to make sure this is taken care of, stuff like you'll, you'll see. All right. So as as I was sharing with you, traditional funeral costs typically are going around twelve to fifteen thousand nowadays. Um, so you know, keep that into consideration. Instead of now, that, say, uh, do me a favor. Do you know how much your funeral costs? Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. I want to give you my name and number to jot down. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, I was gonna say you got me outside on the porch. <laughs> Right. Is it a nice day out today up there? Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, we're, I'm in Florida and we're starting to catch that humidity from the hot from the from the hot summer weather, which I'm not looking forward to because it gets really hot down here. Shit, yeah, Florida, wonderful. <laughs> Goodness. But after my summers is like I always like to be around the beach because it's too hot. <laughs> Anything with water. Right. I'm ashamed to say my kids have never seen the beach. Never seen the really? beach. Really? Yeah. Son of a oh beach. Oh, my goodness. So yeah. you have got to take a vacation and take them to Sarasota Beach. It's like the number It's the number one beach in the United States. Yeah, I know. It. Uh, we just, we bought this abandoned farm. Everybody in three counties used it as a dump at one time or another. Really? And yeah. And we, uh, I guess this is year five. Yeah. We have uh, took to our local dump almost 75 left of trash. Wow. And uh, it's a poor. <laughs> My goodness. So you guys are in the country. Oh, yeah. We're way out here. <laughs> <laughs> I got my ink here. I'm trying to find something to write on now. Okay. I didn't forget about you. Just... That's Ooh. okay. Get here at my desk. Yeah, we get so busy. They done put me a desk in the living room. <laughs> So a desk, a desk in the living room, but then they no no pen and paper, right? <laughs> I got plenty of pens. Got to sign and check. Okay, here we go. All I'm right. ready. So, uh, my name is Tiffany. Just spelled T I F F A N Y. Okay. My phone numbers. Mm -hmm. All right. And, Alan, I appreciate the opportunity to see how I can help you today. When they discuss final expense coverage for people, they're typically looking to accomplish one of three things. Uh, usually they want to make sure that they have enough coverage for funeral expense and any leftover bills so that there's no burden left on the family. Or, two, they're looking at leaving a special gift or a legacy to their loved ones like children, grandkids, or spouses. Or they're looking at leaving a donation to a church or a charity that has significance to them. What's the most important reason for your insurance to do for you? Uh, to make sure my kids just keep going. Make sure the kids keep going? Yeah, the, where they don't have that, that bill to pay. I'm imagining the children are robots right now. They just got to keep going. <laughs> like... Like they're going to run out of batteries or something. Planting me in the ground. Okay. Uh, we've got a family cemetery. That's about the only good thing going for them. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. I mean, uh, the cemetery part, so so the plot's already taken care of then? Yeah, it's creepy, but I know exactly where I'll be buried and all kinds of good stuff. Because i got five little brothers. And you the whole back, the whole back family is buried there. Oh, you've lost five brothers already. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm the oldest of five brothers. Oh, I thought you were saying oh, wow. you lost five brothers already. <laughs> oh, oh Lordy, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so, but you've got it all taken care of for the whole family to be there then, is what you're saying. Yes. Well, that's good that you guys were able to do that and at least, you know, start on that process for you. Um, but I do think it's awesome that you're taking the time to have this conversation today because it sounds like you definitely love your family and you don't want you don't want the kids um, to have to come up with the financial part of it and cover the expenses of the, of the varying part. Now, as long as we qualify you and find something that you want to take advantage of today, what I'm going to do is have a walk. Okay, another thing. What, like... You know, do you have any insurance? No. Okay, you okay with that? No. Why not? Well, because this. How does it make you feel? Okay. Uh, why have you put it off? So those are some questions you really want to add in here too. Okay, well, why have you put it off? Why haven't you done anything about it yet? Um, why is this important to you now? Uh, have you, what, what have you been doing recently before you talked to this this representative? Had you talked to anybody or searched for it, had, for any, any solution to this? Have you... Um, since you talked to the representative, have you searched for anything for this or looked at any solutions to make sure your final expenses are taken care of for your family? Uh, what would happen if you don't do anything, right? Well, what are the consequences? Like what, what would that happen? What, what would it change for you if, if what would change for you personally if you were able to take care of this? Okay. And then you want to repeat back to them what they said too before you present. One packet sent to you in the mail um, and immediately. And that will have all of my information plus information about the plan and the company that you qualified for today. You'll get that in about three to four days, and then you'll get the actual policy within about 10 days. And that way, you'll have everything that we're going to talk about today in black and white for you, okay? Okay. Um, so first things first, can you go ahead and confirm your age for me? Uh, uh, what am I? I'm 49. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 50 to 18. Okay, so what's your, your date of birth is uh, March 18th? Yes, ma'am, 73. Uh, 1973, perfect. Well, happy early birthday, the day after St. Patty's Day. <laughs> yeah, uh, 31 more minutes I would have been born on Patrick's Day instead of the 18th. <laughs> really? My, my, yeah. It's funny because my sister was born on St. Patty's Day, and then my brother was born on the 16th the day before. But the two different years, like different years, like one's older and one's younger. I don't know how my mom planned that one out, but. <laughs> yeah. but and then, and then the other, her other two kids, which was, which was me and my other brother, because I have two brothers and a sister, and I'm the oldest of four. Um, but my baby brother, the one that just died last year, his birthday was October 10th, and mine is October 13th. So I don't know how she did that to her kids. Way way off with different years too. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think I don't think anybody could have ever done that if they even planned it. But I thought it was pretty unusual and kind of cool at the same time because we always had a brother and a sister celebrating in the same month together. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So um, but yeah. Um, like okay. So I've got your date of birth in here. Forty nine for male and. So that I can figure out what you qualify for. Do you have any history of any heart, liver, kidney, or lung issues? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. And any history of any cancer, heart attack, stroke, COPD, or diabetes? My dad. No, this is he your was, this is your history, like for you. Do oh, you have my any history. history. Yeah. <laughs> no, any, ma'am. None of that. I'm okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, and then are you currently on or prescribed any medications that the doctor has you take? Yes, I'm on a blood pressure medicine. Okay, that's pretty common and usual. Yeah. Um, is that the only one that you're on is just blood pressure? Yes. Okay. And then how tall are you? Uh, what's that? How tall are you? Oh, how tall? Mm-hmm. I don't, today's Monday, I can tell. I am 6'3". <laughs> All right, 6'3". All right, and then and how much do you currently weigh? Right. That's a good question. Huh. <laughs> uh, if I would have to guess, at least 300 pounds. Around 300? Okay. Yeah, I'm a big seller. All right. All muscle, right? <laughs> 
I hope. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And then are you a smoker or non-smoker? Oh, you got me. I'm a smoker. Okay. No worries. Yes, it is a worry. Um, I've tried to quit. I've tried to quit. I actually quit with Chantix. My non-smoking friends are like, well, just give them up. I used to smoke like a pack and a half a day. I quit with Chantix. Then I picked up Dulce de Leche Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's hard to do that, right? Yeah, all these additives in them cigarettes now. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. By the way, I'm doing this on a Sunday. I'm saying that to show you that when you get into this business and you got goals you want to accomplish, the more action you put in, the better you're going to do. Like if I work seven days a week and someone else works five, I'm going to get there 30% faster than them. That's just how it is. Ain't nothing like it used to be. My dad was smoking and, you know, it's just, it's an, I know it's a nasty habit, but it's just, I don't know. I, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Well, I, have you heard of the um, the hypnotizing? Yes, I did. I'm, I'm going to look into that. I've been told that uh, the insurance I have won't pay for it. But, uh, you know, I think it's worth a good investment. And I've been, I got some numbers from my doctor, uh, the local little, uh, the little, the local town city of Owensboro here. Uh, they said that's where it's at. So I've been meaning to try to get a hold of them and see what it cost and get my butt up there. But uh, you know, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this like call right up a little now, bit. This is where everything's still in dormant. I've got trees coming in. We've been planting trees, big chicken coops, and um, he's busy. The local dog catcher knows that any kind of pup he brings to me, I'm kind of somewhat of a dog rescue. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you can, um, if you can definitely get involved with the, the hypnotizing, um, they said that's very successful. Um, my grandfather actually did that, and they said it was the best thing that could ever happen. Right. right. They told me some people can be hypnotized and others can't. I figured it'd be, you know, worth the price to at least find out. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, last but not least, some of our carriers offer discounts based on how you manage your finances. Don't need any specific information right now, but you do have an active checking or savings account, correct? Yes. Perfect. Just to make sure we're partnered with them, who do you bank with? Uh, it used to be Fort Knox. Federal, I think. What is it now? Uh, abound. Abound. Uh, yeah, abound credit. Abound credit unions. Okay, credit unions are one of the awesome banks. So usually they have really good deals and things going on with them. So. Okay, so you know I don't give any. There's no account numbers or anything on here. But what we like to ask, just to see if they have a direct express card, if they have an active check your savings account, is. Um, hey, now some of our carriers offer discounts based on how you manage your finances. I don't need any specific information. But do you have an active checking your savings account or do you use one of those prepaid cards from the government, the Direct Express cards? Because Direct Express, as we all know, is the best. I used to bank with yeah, uh, get, State Federal Credit Union. Just kidding. Yeah, I get stuff from them all the time wanting to sell me afterlife insurance. And, you know, I just, you know how it is. You just throw it away. <laughs> and keep going. Subscribe to and the you know, channel. I'm, I'm turn on post mechanic, notifications. Own, put Band-Aid on kids. I'm on everything. You know, we, yeah. we don't get out unless we have to because, you know, it's just, about a 20 minute drive, 30 minute drive to anything. Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. it. For sure. All I right. Keep, I keep telling the kids that if they don't calm down around here, I'm going to sell everything off and move to Florida. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I threaten them all the time. I'm going to Florida. And they're like, are you going to take us with you? But no, yeah, I'm a Kentucky boy. So I drove a truck for a long time. I've seen every state there is. And I like them all, but Kentucky is my place. Oh, I hear you. I mean, that's, that's good for you. All right. Give me one second here. What am I doing? I got to goose myself. Dog catcher truck's pulling in my driveway right now. <laughs> oh, man. I hope he ain't got another one. My boy's out there talking to him. The oldest. Uh, uh, I always said I'd never own a pit bull until I owned one. Oh, yeah? Well, own one. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with a pit bull breed. It's all about how you raise them. So, do you have a pit bull? Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Well, that's what he used to be. Now, I don't know what he is. Hey, Tiffany. Hi. A big old, a big Here's where I jump in. Oh, yeah? Uh, Hey, how you doing? All right. So normally I have them introduce me. What happened when she was dialing on Zoom, I pushed her to a separate breakout room on Zoom. I, ha- I asked her to share her screen. I don't think she saw me ask her to bring me in to the call. Um, 
normally I would have someone do like a smooth transition, like, hey, by the way, I'm going to bring our manager in here. I, I did that because I have access to the back end of all my agents' phone lines. So um, if you're like, how did that even happen? Yeah, that's how it works. So on our CRM, uh, we have it so that you can jump in on the back end of a call, right, if someone's on a call. So I did that, um, and I just jumped in randomly. I sensed that the need was not built uh, based on how the guy was talking and the notes that she had taken. I was like, hey, you know, I get it. He doesn't have any insurance. Said so he didn't have any insurance. I get it. He doesn't have any insurance. But um, in listening to – I had been listening to the call for about 10 minutes at that point. And I'm like, hey, you know, I don't really think that the urgency has been built here because, guys, if you don't find that need – and find the problem and then help them find a solution to their problem and then bring out the emotions behind their problem, they're going to not feel the same level of urgency. They're going to want to put it off. They're going to want to wait. Okay. Maybe not all the time. You're going to get people who will do it, but there's a much higher chance that someone's going to be like, I have to think about it or whatever. Awesome, man. Good to hear. My name is Justin. I'm going to uh, be helping you out here and see what's available. My line breaks up here. Okay, I jump come on, back. Good, man. No, it's, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was saying I heard you talking about your pit bull. Do you have a pit bull? Yes. Cool, man. What's uh, what's her name? Or what's his name? His name's Rocky. Rocky. <laughs> okay. Cool. After the boxer. <laughs> well, when I get a dog, I just look at him in the face and I name him. I like that. That's cool. That's how you gotta do it. He's that, got that's like a hundred dogs. I, I didn't know, I know at that point. Person, person, but I did. That he had like oh, a man, this all those was dogs. A nice looking lady. Oh yeah. <laughs> she was one of my first crushes. <laughs> so mine was Daisy Duke. Okay, Daisy Duke's up. Mine was actually the Pink Ranger from Power Rangers. That was my era. I'm 33, so the Pink Ranger was my first crush. <laughs> oh, right on. Yep. I've never seen my youngest little brother watching that show. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, here, well, uh, I'm going to just ask you a couple things here. Now, Tiffany may have asked you some of the questions I'm about to ask you. I'm not doing it to be a pain, but I, I just want to make sure we get all the right information. So, um, now, have you, um, uh, what is your current plan look like to take care of your final expenses and, and leave some money behind if, if, heaven forbid, you passed away? Uh, I've got a little nest egg stashed in a, in my safe and that's about it. Okay. And if something goes wrong, you know, it'll, it won't be there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, and are, are you, are you okay with that? No. Okay. Um, I should have said, why not right there? I should have said, well, why not? And he would have said, because she's not going to have anything. And I would say, well, how does that make you feel? So I messed up there. I didn't follow the whole the whole thing. I was a little, I don't know why I didn't ask that, but I didn't. So I, I messed up there, right, right there, big time. I still got the sale, but I it would have been easier if I did that. Now, if if something uh, happened, um, you know, if that if that ran out, well, what would happen if you passed? Like, what what would your what would your family do? They'd be living off the wife soon come. Okay. And is that, would that be enough to, to handle everything? But, you know, you know as well as I do, it never is enough. Yeah. No, you're right, man. It's hard. I mean, you know, it's crazy. My, my, both of my grandparents, both of my grandmothers didn't work and my grandfather's, well, one of them made a good amount of money, but the other one was a mechanic. He didn't make a ton of money, you know, and it's crazy how like he was able to support us. They had 11 kids and imagine that one guy working, one guy working full time could support a family. Now you need like two full time jobs from each parent to, to make it, make it happen, huh? Yeah. So um, why is it important? Why is this important to you now? Um, what, what had you looking into this now? Uh. I don't know. I really wasn't looking into it. I got a phone call from a guy one day and he caught me on the tractor and I gave him enough information before my phone went dead. And okay. All right. No. So the only, so when you, so telemarketing leads, like the guy wasn't just cold called, like he had requested this information. So essentially like what a lot of telemarketing leads are is they take like really old leads, scrub them against a do not call list and then call them to see if they're still interested. And if they are, then they give him the information. So he's like, oh, I wasn't really looking at it for it until the guy called me. Like, no, that's like a really one in a million chance. OK, so and plus, if we don't do this, we could get, you know, TCPA lawsuits and stuff like that, which are not fun. So, uh, by the way, buy some Dulce de Leche Cinnamon Toast Crunch if you haven't yet. Um, the 20th comment on this post will actually get a free box of Dulce de Leche Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So comment 20th comment gets a box. Um, yeah, so he, he, he wanted it. Now here we are. Gotcha. Y'all done put, put the thought in my head now. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 
um, <laughs> be, so before that, had had you thought about this at all, or 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 no? No, no, I I won't lie to you. No, uh, it's okay. just so damn hectic. Like I was telling that Tiffany lady, you know, we bought an abandoned farm that everybody in 20 counties was using as a dump. And after about 70 or 80 loads to our local dump, we're been, we've been planting apple trees and everything else. So, you know, wow. there's just no time for thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty cool, though, that, that, that you did that. Yeah, there's a creek that runs across the middle of the back of the property and you know, it's a it's wonder the EPA wasn't out here. I mean, engine blocks, Seriously. tires. You you know, find I'm, a... I'm not a tree hugger or anything, but I know <laughs> that's, you know, that's nasty. Yeah, I mean, um, you don't have to be a tree hugger to appreciate nature, though, you know? <laughs> that's right. And now, by golly, we've been planting trees. I think we planted 40 or 50 last season, and right now we've got... Let's see, yesterday I think they planted about eight or nine. So and then chicken coops and turkey coops and rabbit coops and gardens and rabbit that's a lot of hugs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I try to, you know, rescue pups whenever I can. Oh, okay, cool. You gonna put them on the farm? Yeah, we got a uh, we got rabbit a couple coop. of cats. I don't try to keep cats because of the you know, the wild rabbit. But, you know, oh, there's yeah. a couple wandering around. But between boxers and pit bulls, and we've got another one out here. His name is Bruno. He's a Alaskan Husky. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta keep them cleaned and flea. I don't want no fleas in my house. So, you know, got to be that yeah, responsible please. pet owner. Well, exactly, man. Exactly. So you, you, uh, if if you, you, you taking care of now, you're young, your uh, final expense or, or life insurance coverage. Um, how how would what what would it do for you personally, or what what would it do for your family in the long run? What would you want it to do? Where they can keep going without without missing a beat. You know, right. I guess you know it does suck for them to bury me or what have you but you know i want to know that they can just keep right on going yeah no for sure uh, then that's uh, that's why most people uh, have interest in these things and have, have you considered the possible ramifications that if, if you don't do anything about this i'm kind of doing it but i could have well um uh, yeah i have but my family you know whenever a family member dies passes away that's the first thing the whole family does is make sure that the family can take care of the funeral because we got a, a family cemetery we dig our own graves and, you know. We dig our own graves. Uh, me, personally, I want an old-fashioned funeral. No, I don't want to be embalmed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I want to go back into the ground the way I come out. Yeah, my, um, I, I feel my, I, I live in South Florida. And, uh, and he came out of the Florida, ground. He's uh, Hasidic Jewish, and he said that that's how some of their funerals were. It's illegal, but he said they do it anyway. They just, there's like a, on, on, in the in the, the casket or the, or the box or whatever that people are in, there's actually, uh, they'll keep the board underneath loose. So it looks like a traditional burial or wherever the ceremony is, but then at the end they pull the bottom out of the, out of the, um, I don't exactly know if if in, in if they use a casket or, or what it looks like. I don't know. I, I'm Christian, so I, I've never seen it. But he way he explained it. it's kind of like a casket, but probably not a big casket. And he said that at the bottom they pull it out because it's in, that's why they have funerals so quickly. So like if he had a family member die, it was like like the next day they get buried or something because it's like no one bombing it just right into the ground, buried there. Um, yep, that's me. Yeah. Well, in Kentucky, my dad used to tell me there was a table of ice that the casket would sit on because you know they had a funeral at home. Yeah. By the way, if you have any questions about this, just post them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Check out the links in the description of the video as well for some other useful material. So it was it was just a big ice block. Oh, really? And like, yeah, and like you said, they were buried the next day. Yeah. That way, yep. you know, I don't I don't want my family and my people to have to you know be at a be there like two or three days, and then you know then your burial ceremony and all that. No, you know, it's bad enough that I'm fell over dead. Last thing they need to do is spend three or four days at a funeral home. Yeah, no, it really is, man. And then everybody goes through the whole, you know, the whole process of it. So do you, you feel yeah. like a, uh, you know, because of, because of what you told me about you having a nest egg stashed in the safe, but you, know, you kind of want to make sure that there's, there's something um, a little extra there. Uh, do you feel yeah. like 
maybe a, a life insurance plan could be the the, the answer to, to solve that potential problem? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just really never checked into it before because, you know, I, you know how it is. Yeah. You I mean, it's easy like to sweep under the back burner. Exactly. Yeah. It's so easy to sweep under the rug, right? But, yeah. you know, based on, based on everything that you said to me, looks like I got a plan that's a uh, perfect fit for you with a company named Pioneer Security Life. Now, what you're basically saying is you, you want to make sure this is taken care of for them if you pass and you feel like it's worth looking into. And uh, just so you know, all of our programs pay out within 48 hours after your passing so that your family wouldn't have to, have to wait weeks to get that claim paid, okay? And anyone who gets the program uh, before the end of March actually gets a free living will and a final wishes guide to allow your voice and choices to be heard after you've passed on, okay? Yes. All right. Now, a little bit about our us, our company, Senior Life Services. We're 43 years old. We're based out of Vero Beach, Florida, and uh, we, we work all across the country. We process millions of dollars in claims per month, which has actually helped us earn an A-plus rating didn't. with the Better Business Bureau. Now, a little history on the company that pre-approved you here. Um, now, real quick, you um, I just want to make sure I got this right. You're 6'3", 300 pounds, right? Yes. You're, you're, a, you're a brick house, man. <laughs> well, I used to build them. <laughs> 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 oh man. Okay. So, uh, let me just see now. Um, how many high blood pressure pills are you on? Just one. I take one every morning. Okay. Let me, are you on any other medications? No. All right. Let me see something here. As long as you don't count ibuprofen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. No. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I hate medicine. Me too. I don't like medicine, period. The way Me I look too. at anything, anything man-made is not good for you. No, it's not. I agree. You know, it, Except this. Trying you know, to, I, uh, know, I can go out here in my yard and in my woods, and I can find enough stuff to uh, take any kind of pain away. Mm -hmm. Just got to know what you're looking for. What's he growing in his woods? <laughs> and, you know, he's growing something there. Uh, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask doing? something here, uh, Zach. Let's speed something up here. Let's speed up. this up a little bit again. All right. And, do, do. and you use tobacco. Right, so. Do you smoke cigarettes or, or chew? Or? Yeah. Awesome. That's not okay. I'm not asking you to stop. Me too. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm old enough to know better, you know, and well, I mean, think family that you. <laughs> yeah, I, I quit uh, cigarettes a few years ago. I took that Chantix pill and I, I quit after 10 days. I never smoked again after that. I didn't even want a cigarette. True. It was so weird. No. But it worked. Yeah. You yeah. know how, like, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I'm, I'm listening to you. No, I was just saying, you know how when you wake up, sometimes the first thing you think about is smoking a cigarette? Yeah, I've kind of gotten over that. About yeah, that. that's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I didn't, and, and that was the only thing that, that helped me get over it. <laughs> Right, me, it's, I gotta get that first cup of coffee made, get a couple drinks of it, and then I smoke. I mean, it's not much, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah I, I get that. I try, I, not much. They all I, say but that. I just couldn't keep them lit. Well, so, um, let me ask you this, how much is your, how much is your mortgage? Oh, Lord, let's see. So here, I'm going in. There's two of them combined into one. Oh, it's right at $600. I'm sorry. $600 a month? Yep. Okay, do you know what the total <laughs> amount for it is, or? The principal. Okay, the principal. It was forty nine eight. That's I got in. I got in when it was a buyer's market. Nice man. Now let me ask you this: How much money would you need to leave behind every month for your family to continue their lifestyle? Every month. Yeah, how much? How much? What's your financial value right now to your to your family every month? Oh, uh, just over a thousand dollars a month. Okay, so you'd want to leave. So say you could leave like, um, you know, like a thousand dollars. If you left fifteen hundred a month, would that help them continue the the um their the their life your family's way of life right now lifestyle? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm so, yeah. Them. You know, when I drove a truck or worked in construction, 
I could make fifteen hundred dollars in a week. Now, you know, I'm down to you know, the government paying me once a month. And, you know, I I've learned the ways of watching what you do with your money. You know, I went from being a big spender to now I don't spend. So Yeah, I hear that, man. So 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 um if if there specifically what we want to look at is how much money you would uh, need, need to leave behind for every month, right? So, um, yeah. how you're thinking like like fifteen hundred? Yeah. Okay. At least. Okay, gotcha. I mean, my kids, you know, they're not bad. They they don't mind not to spend money, mm -hmm. but now you know they're into shotguns, rifles. Oh, and they're pretty expensive. <laughs> no, they are. I just got a new shotgun. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad one. One thing I didn't even think of here is I could have talked about asking him if, if he would want to leave some money behind too so his kids could continue their hobbies. He would said, I would have said, yeah. He'd like, okay, why? Why is that important to you? And he'd say, well, because I want them to be able to do right. So you're trying to pull out the... Some's in school and the other oh, one ain't in here. Because they believe every holiday they should get a gun. Birthday, <laughs> Christmas, Easter. Kentucky. And I'm like, you silly? No. <laughs> See, I go to pawn shops and I buy all my guns, but they get the new stuff. Yeah, no, that's what I, my dad goes to guntrader.com and he gets a bunch of cool little collectible ones. Well, um, what I want to go over with you here is um, how many years would you need to continue the income stream for your family if you pass? Like af after how long um, would they not really uh, need, need that anymore? How long would it take them to milk themselves off of my money? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'd have to give them at least a good year. Okay. Well, I mean, how, how old is your youngest? He's 16. Okay. So would you say like probably another, maybe another 10 years or like, like conservatively um, you know, or like liberally just if, you know, if he, assuming that maybe there may be some other expenses come up and stuff, would you want to leave enough money to cover for like the next like 20 years or 10 years or something, or something like that and then leave some extra for the final expenses and, and all that? Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, all right. Well, that would um, keep me from coming back and haunting them. <laughs> all right. I'll well, them. I said, y'all screw up. I'm coming back at you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They get well, worried. They get worried real bad when somebody starts talking to me about death and insurance and stuff like that. They they tend to freak out a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, glad are you going to make nobody around? No, I'm glad to. Yeah, for sure. Are you are you you're on disability right now? Yes. Okay. And so I'm glad I noticed that. So, um, what I'm going to look at for you here is it a military disability or or, or federal like or state just like the is it is, it, is it okay federal okay did you, did you did you serve in the military or no? No. Okay. okay you're 49. Um, I helped build the big bad city of Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, cool, man. When I was 10. <laughs> you're you're going to be 50 in 12 days, right? Yeah. Or yes, I'm sorry. Okay. So you see what I was doing there? I was asking him about his mortgage. So this is a thing. Like, someone, even, so you're going to run into people sometimes who are going to say that they have their, their final expenses paid for and taken care of, right? Which, that's cool. Good for them. But one thing you can ask them is, hey, how much is your mortgage? And they may tell you. Um, if they, all right, you can ask, oh, do you want, do you want a home? Yes. Okay. Do you have a mortgage? Yeah. Okay. How much is it? Now, if the house is paid off, you can say, okay, great. Well, that could help you in two ways, or it could help you in the sense where they don't have an, a debt, a bill every month to, uh, you know, they're, they're, that's some free income, but it may also allude to them having more money than maybe they would, you know, like more than enough money where they wouldn't need a final expense policy. But you say, do you have, do you have a, a house yet? Yeah, do you have a mortgage? They say yes. And you can say, okay, um, how much money How much money is that? And they'll say whatever it is a month. And then you got to ask, hey, is someone going to have to pay that when you die? And they'll probably say, yeah. And if, if it's either going to go to their kids or their, their, love, their spouse or something like that, right? Someone's going to get their house. So when someone dies and they own a home, there's property taxes, even if it's paid off. There's bills, electric, all that stuff, even if it's still paid off. And if there's a mortgage, that adds even more. So even if someone has their final expenses taken care of, you want to make them understand like, hey, yes, you, but you're leaving behind something to, do to your family. You don't want that asset to become a liability, right? Would you want that asset to become a liability? No. Okay. So if you leave your house to your kids and all of a sudden they get a new bill every month that they have to pay for, that's pretty significant. Would they be more likely to keep your house, sell it, keep your house, or sell it quickly or hold on to it until they can get the best price for it. Now, most likely, 
it, mo most of our clients, their kids don't have a lot of money. So I, I like I had a, well, someone the other day we sold them because I was like, hey, look, like that house, they were like, oh, my kids are going to sell my house when I die. I said, yeah, I'm sure they will. But like if you leave them a house that has taxes and bills, then they're going to put it on the market and they're going to get like the, clo the closest offer they can. They're going to sell it right away because they don't want to have to spend money every month. So and say the house is worth $100,000, they may sell it for 70 instead of getting 100 for it because they're not going to want to wait a few extra months for a good deal to come in. I don't like it. Yep, shit. I get and it. I just sat here and done it. It's okay. No worries. All right. So, okay. All right. So, um, I'm gonna have you do this for me. Well, okay. Well, first I'll go over the, the features of it. So, based on um, on what you said here, it looks like the, this program that you qualify for is with a company called American Home Life. All right. American Home Life. And uh, this the other place. Pioneer? Yes. I'm making sure I'm not screwing anything up. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not. I didn't notice that you were, were collecting disability, and Pioneer is weird about that if someone smokes too. So this company is really good with it. They don't even ask about that. So. Okay. Yep. So um, this program, it would kick in the day that you make your first payment, all right? And since it's a permanent policy, your rates would never go up, no matter how what happens to your health or how long you live, okay? So you can never, uh, you'll never outlive the plan, and you know that, that you're always going to have that. So now I'm presenting the plan, and what you guys got to understand is once you find out what their problem is, and, and like what they want to solve, then you can present this pro this product in the form of a solution. One thing I didn't do is repeat back to him his problem and how he felt about it. That's important to do before you transition into the presentation. So say, hey, so you know how you told me that you uh, didn't have anything to cover your final expenses, you had a small nest egg that, that you didn't really feel comfortable about, and because of that, you're a little anxious that if you pass, your family won't be able to take care of everything for you. Well. Uh, ba based on that, I think I got a program that's a perfect fit for you, but not everyone qualifies. Would you mind if I ask you a few health questions just to maybe see if I can even help you? And then there I was like, oh, yeah. And then you keep going. So you, you like pull the emotion and then hit it with a little exclusivity. That money they're behind to leave to your to your family if something happens to you. It's not going to expire. OK. OK. Now, what if I quit smoking? Would would anything go down? Nope. Well, they could do a potentially a rate evaluation, or we could see if there would be another company that would lower the rate. But it's you have to prove that you haven't smoked for a year, so it's like okay. it wouldn't even be right away, right? So yeah, if, yeah. If we, if you quit and a year goes by, then yes, we could reapply to, as a non-smoker. But um, you know, it's I mean, it is what it is. So. I understand. Yep. And now this plan also has cash value. So what that means is as you're paying into the plan, there's going to be a savings portion of the program so that you'll have some money there to do really, if they say you run into an emergency on the farm or something, you needed some equipment or supplies or seeds were really, uh, really expensive that year, then you could always dig into the cash value of the plan to help you with that. And also this plan has a terminal illness benefit which means that if you ever had less than a year to live, then you would get this money ahead of time to go take care of your affairs for your family and make sure that you saw kind of the money was used as you see fit, okay? Well, that sounds good, but man, sounds expensive too, buddy. I won't <laughs> uh -huh. Well, some of those things I went over are included in it. I'm gonna go over the, the rates with you here. Uh, do you feel like if this is something that you could manage financially that this a program like this would be the answer for you? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Why do you why do you feel that way? Well, you know, it's my grocery bill is quadrupled per month, and you know, to add another bill in here, you know, it just I have to be worried about it. Oh, oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I get it. All right. Okay. Cool. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. They do. I know that. So so do this. Uh, Grab me a, um, this is for the, the whole life, so grab a pen and piece of paper for me. Shoot, buddy, I'm already on it. The lady before you done had me get one out. <laughs> so I'm going to have you write down um, uh, 50000 Okay. 45000 All right. And 30000 and I'll take that and 
small unmarked bills. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, the fifty thousand. This is the maximum that you qualify for, and I'll work down from here. So the fifty thousand dollar plan, it would be two forty eight per month. All right. The forty five thousand would be two hundred twenty three per month. All right. And the thirty thousand would be one fifty per month. No rush. All right. So which of those do you feel be the best fit, or is there another option you want to see? Oh no. Um, well, the fifty thousand I like, but uh, to do that I'd have to get the wife to help me pay for it by the month. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she gets paid every two weeks, and then I get paid every month. So. We kind of try to make it easier. I don't know, you know, I don't know how to put it in words, but you know, no, it makes sense. We we balance stuff out where you know, I'm still sitting on the side of bed at nights worrying about stuff, but you know, I don't do it as bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get that, uh, man. But uh, without telling you a story, I would have to show her what I just wrote down. You told me and. We'd have to try to factor it in to the bills, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm aiming, I'm aiming for the fifty thousand. You know, yeah, uh, it's a good choice. I really, I really have to sit down with her when these kids go to bed, and mm -hmm. really dig down with a calculator, and because I don't want to screw nothing up. You know, if I screw something up, these kids might not eat for a day or two. Yeah, I don't, that. I don't want that. Yeah, no one that's wants that. Yeah, that's my biggest fear. You know, I, I mean, you can, you can come and take everything I own, but don't take my kid's baloney sandwich. <laughs> I know that, man. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> well, Alan, so so this, <laughs> <laughs> I love baloney sandwiches. Fried bologna and cheese. My dad used to make that. Oh, yeah, a big old slab of tomato on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, you're going to get me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> So, Alan, um, you know, I, I know that monthly it's important that there's nothing that puts you over the over the limit. And with life insurance, the way it actually works is that um, the only person who's legally obligated to pay anything is the insurance company, not actually the person who has it, right? So, meaning they're, they're legally obligated to pay if you pay your, your premium. Uh, you're not legally obligated to have to pay your premium. So, if it was last resort and something happened, then... You know, you wouldn't be in trouble if, if you guys decided not to keep it. But what I what I think would be important to do here is for us to see um, first to see if the, if we can get you uh, qualified for a plan because I, I know this is it's important to you. And what I'm looking at here is the company they really have the best rates of out of all the companies in Kentucky. So I do work with a few companies as you as you heard us go through. So if Say on the on the very at the very least, right? That way you could have your final expenses paid for. And you know your mortgage could be paid for for, for a, a year or a little more, um, a year or two. Um, the thirty thousand dollars for one fifty a month, right? Without without taking out a calculator, do you think that the uh, one fifty is something that you and your wife could manage every month? Oh yeah, pretty okay. sure of it. Okay. Like I said, so, I don't want to get in over my head until she's here. Mm -hmm. But you know, because I take these bills every month very seriously. No, I mean, yeah, no, as as you should, right? So what I, what I want to do? Bald. Yeah, no, it's it's important. I done lost all my hair over worrying about it, so. Yeah, me too. Mine's, mine's fading back, so. Oh, man. I just had long, flowing locks, and now I'm bald. Embrace it, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't have to. It's cheaper on shampoo and haircuts. <laughs> hey, that's true. That's true. I just stand out in the yard and give myself a haircut. <laughs> so. My dad uses a Floby. <laughs> What's that? My dad uses a Floby. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yep. Yep. So. Oh, good. So it, I, I want you to be able to talk with your wife, and I want you to have everything to you in black and white so she can see all the, the details of it and kind of know the ins and outs of the policy here. So part of uh, moving forward with the process is us to apply and see if you qualify for something, if this is something that makes sense to do and if you feel like this could solve, if this program could help you. Now, there are some other amounts that we could apply for that are lower, and if you get approved for these, then you can always increase it. If you and your wife decide whichever one that you wanted to manage every month, like you don't, you don't have to start with the 50000 We could apply for a smaller program. And if you qualify for that, you actually qualify for up to 50000 right? So, for example, like uh, to have your final arrangements taken care of and leave some extra money behind, say, say there was so the, uh, like the $15,000 plan, right? So there's a $15,000 option, and it's 76 per month. The, so the, the 30000 is 150 but there's a $15,000 option that's 76 per month. 
And the reason I was asking is if there's something that, that you know that you can manage without looking at the calculator is if, if this is important, you guys are going to do probably do it anyway, then we could apply for a smaller amount. And if you get approved, then you're good to go and you can increase it if you want. And actually, if we apply today, um, we could actually apply and we could set your payment in the future so that you and your wife can talk about it. And if you get approved, you know, you have that approval. And the way it would work is we could set the first payment technically, I think up to like 30 days from now. And if you get approved for it, you guys have that time to figure out, hey, which coverage amount you want. And even if you make that first payment, you'll have 30 days from that time to make any changes from there as well. So with us being able to apply to see if you could get qualified for this, would it make sense for us to apply for the $15,000 and it's 76 per month? We can post date that for sometime at the end of March or beginning of April. That way you and your wife can coordinate your finances around it. And if you narrow down on which one you want to increase to, then all we got to do is call the carrier and we can change the coverage from there. Would that work for you? Oh yeah, sure would. Okay, cool. So what we'll do here, we'll apply for this one here. Uh, the 15,000 for 76, is that, is that fair to apply for? Or would you want to apply for a higher one? No, you're, you're okay. You're, you got the right train of thought. Okay, gotcha. Um, so let me so if you listen to what I did there, he objected to applying for the whole 50,000 that he wanted. You can run through it again. I know I played it at one and a half speed, but he objected to want to paying for the, or to wanting to pay for the $50,000 policy. So, cause he has to talk to his wife about it. Um, and based on what he said, his financial situation was that made sense. So what I did is I had him settle on a coverage amount that he knew that he could handle without having to talk to his wife. So yeah, for him to go over something for something that's like, you know, 200 bucks a month, uh, then yes, he would have to consult his wife about it. But for something that was like 70, 75 bucks a month, he didn't have to go to his wife about it. So it wasn't that he didn't want it. It was just that it was the price objection. So we isolated that and we handled it. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, you'd have to talk to her about that, but what can you do without having to check your budget? What can you do without having to break out the calculator? What do you know that you and your wife could manage every month and without you getting in trouble and that you know would at least help you guys? Right? So. See here, um, Tiffany, you're still on the line here, right? Yes. Okay, do you, do you, have, a, you, have, a, you have your Patriot login here? Yeah. Okay, actually, I think, oh, you're logged in right here, okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm gonna do here is just go here and do, 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 do. All right, so your zip code, is it 40140 over there in Garfield? Yes. Okay, and you're born in 1973, right? Yes. Three, three, eighteen, seventy-three. Yes. Okay. Oh, since you're gonna turn fifty, actually, um, let me see here. Uh, Sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. Sorry, brother. All right. So <laughs> let me let well, me actually. Thing, I don't care about age numbers. <laughs> I like my birthday to come around because I make myself a nice cake and we get ice cream. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, I don't care about that age. Just bring me some cake and ice cream. <laughs> actually, I got a, uh, I got a, I got a, um, I got good news here. So since what we're gonna be doing is applying for the. Uh, policy to start in the future, um, we actually would be using uh, that original company, Pioneer, because once you're over 50, they don't ask about disability anymore, okay? So that won't even matter, and they're actually, you're actually going to get 2,000 more, you're going you're to get more in coverage for the same money. So instead of 15,000 for 76, uh, 17,000 for 74, because they're actually better with tobacco rates for when people are 50 or older. So what I was saying there is it's actually not a bad thing that in this situation here <laughs> that you are, uh, that you turn into, it's going to be easier, okay? Right, right. <laughs> All right. So you're six three three hundred. Do you know the name of your blood pressure medication? Like uh, the uh, Don't you make fun of me when I try to pronounce this now. You can just spell it for me. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, it's up. Uh, gotcha. And um, your beneficiary, your wife's name? Yes. Okay. And do you have another initial? And um, would you want to put a contingent beneficiary to heaven forbid something happen to your to your wife and you at the same time who would receive it? Okay, their names? Well, he's not right. now. And uh, okay, so we're gonna apply for the seventeen thousand. Okay, and then we're looking at. Um, all right, we're looking at seventy four twenty six. All right. No road. <laughs> Can you hear me there? Oh yeah. Alan, you there? There you are. Cutting in that on me. Oh no! Oh, I didn't lose him. You there, Alan? There you are. There's somebody. Yeah. No, yeah, I got you. I don't know what happened there, man. My computer decided to, to take a dump on me. What's your doctor's oh. name? So what's the now between now and well, when do you when do you guys typically pay your bills? Like the first of the month or the end of the month? Uh, about the third. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put this for April third. Okay. Okay. All right. And use a credit union. You said it's that. Okay. I got their their routing number from their website. I have two eight. Now does that routing number sound correct? Uh, I believe it does. Yeah. Two eight. Do you have a blank check available, or do you know the information for your account at the top of your head? Uh, no, I don't have paper checks. No. Okay, got. You. Do you know your account number, or do you have a bank statement that would have it? Yeah, I know my account number. Okay, what's that? 
Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute now. <laughs> and, yeah, I have to be cautious about how I give it. I know I'm not the richest man in the world, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> I get it, man. I don't like giving it out on the phone either. We're just using it to apply here. You're gonna, I'm going to do a whole right. recording. You're going to hear me say, um, today, I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing to you. I'm going to say, today's date, da, 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 da. you said uh, automated payments to start on April 3rd, 2023. You're going to get the policy in the mail. You got all our number and everything else, man. You're good to answer. Okay. Well, that's, that's the problem. I don't know if it's, if it's you know, every month it's going to come out of my account or hers. We can change it, whatever. They, 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 all you got to do is call them and change the account. That's fine. Okay, okay. Like that, I can't screw nothing up. I got to ask questions. I don't want you to screw it up, man. I, if, if anything got screwed up, I'd feel bad. I'd, I'd end up sending you a check for the money anyway. <laughs> no, no. Now we ain't going to do nothing like that. We'll just do it before it costs anybody money, see? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's easy. Well, they give some resistance. Yeah, yeah. He's going to give resistance with the check there, and then he's going to give resistance chance to get the social. Satellite TV, because he wanted my last digits on my social, and I told him no way. But, you know, he yeah. sounded like he was in another country, too. No, well, we will need to run it. I mean, you know, that, you know, kind of tomorrow, you know, that's, that's it, so. I understand, I understand. Okay, uh, it is. And your social. See, you go get me again. I know, you, you set it up. You, 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 you put I know, <laughs> I know. I, know. I, just, I just want you to know that, you know, it makes my hair stand on my arm. But, um. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to type this. And uh, then I'm going to do the uh, voice signature with you. I did a voice signature and he actually ended up getting approved for that. So he objected to their social and the check. The thing is, if you if you get someone who, who objects to the social security number and getting the account information and getting their check, well, he didn't object to the check, but he gives some pushback. I don't really make a big deal out of it. I'm just like, yeah, you know, we need it for the application. I don't like giving it out either. And I kind of just handle it that way. So I recommend that you guys do the same. If someone gives you objection for the social or the bank account, just don't act like it's a big deal. Be like, yeah, I don't like giving that out either. So I hope you found this video valuable. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications. And watch the next video coming up. We got some more call recordings for you.